All right, let's go again for another episode of the latest news and mad stuff that is happening in the world of the metaverse and AI and why it's important to you as well. All these things are happening. Uh, Why should you know about these and why is it useful? So if you've ever fancied working at Roblox, arguably the biggest game and virtual world on the planet, uh, where you can now go for an interview for a job for Roblox in Roblox. It's all getting very meta, although we can't say meta because that's their competitors. Little joke just to kick things off. You're welcome. Um, or maybe you're, it wasn't a good joke, or maybe you're sick of work and you just want to play golf. We're going to talk about uh, how you can become part of the PGA Tour postseason playoffs um, by playing in Roblox as well. There's plenty going on there. Also, is it time to teach AI to be forgetful? Is that the one thing that, human, one thing that humans can do that, it, that they are better at than at AI? And is that actually important, interesting article, uh, whether we need to teach AI to forget stuff? Uh, and finally, the moment is here where you can't tell if videos are actually real anymore. We've been approaching this moment. Um, it, it's here. Cue the impending shit show, essentially. Uh, let's kick off then with the Roblox Career Center. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about on this podcast was um, recruitment services, but I promise this is actually interesting and fun. So um, they've done a really good job of this and kind of put their money where their mouth is. If you want to get a job at Roblox, you can now go and apply and learn about everything to do with Roblox inside their world. So um, it's quite hilarious what they've done here because it's kind of a combination of like a, a university open day experience slash recruitment center slash video game. And people are encouraged to dress in outfits that definitely uh, wouldn't be appropriate for probably a normal job interview. There's avatars of all sorts there, but genuinely looks really good. Um, it's also made by Sorry, Sawhorse, wait, 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 who we've had. Genuinely looks on. really good. <laughs> yeah, no, no. So I'm all ready to be criticized of like, this sounds like the most boring thing ever. Why would you go there? But it's, it's, fun uh and it's like you know i think everybody's sick of the sort of virtual conference thing conferences are like rubbish why has no one invented like a new way to do a conference like generally they're kind of rubbish in my opinion you're not going to to the right conferences my friend well maybe yeah maybe that is that is true but this is like an interesting one where okay it's a virtual conference but it's not on zoom so you can actually go you're like an avatar that looks interesting and weird there's some genuine like value there's talks there and like roblox explaining how they work and actually people from roblox there and also you know it is a way to properly go and hang out with um your peers in whatever industry you're in so for like this podcast for example i know there's loads of really interesting people who listen different ceos and founders and whoever uh um you know loads of you do loads of interesting stuff because you reach out often so to actually go and be able to go and be in an environment like this where you can go and learn from talks um, and do stuff but it's not just sort of sat on zoom and it's you know you can go and have fun with it and it's a little bit gamified is quite cool and also if you want to have like a breakout room you can just go and play the zombies attacking mcdonald's game or the poop scoop simulator as your little kind of breakout room or one of the other 15 million active experiences i think it's kind of cool so um you know and also you're no doubt going to bump into like other interesting people when it's focused around kind of learning and it's you know people talk about the metaverse as this is one of the use cases you can go and sort of go to school or uni or college or get a job in theory like this is the first example i've seen like actually okay this works it looks cool it kind of reminds me of like you know obviously the apple keynotes we probably all watch from home if you're into tech stuff and it's quite you know it's cool they're announcing stuff and they're they're there this is kind of like you know i imagine they'll they'll use it to do things like that when they announce their next biggest things and you you could actually you know very few of us get to go to the apple keynote and maybe speak to some of the people there and also other peers Whereas this is an example where you could actually go in and do that. So I, I think it's a curveful one to start with because it sounds quite boring, but actually it's quite cool. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think it is cool. I think if you, if you, um, I mean, if you're Gen Alpha and you, you play these games in your mind's eye, you kind of think, well, what's my dream job? Do you want to go and work for the, the, the brands or the companies that make the things that you, you love? Um, I remember for me growing up, that was, but I wanted to make movies. But for my kids, like the, the opportunity to go and work for Roblox, what it would be a chance to take the thing that you love doing already and make it your your job, your vocation. I think that's kind of the appeal for a lot of young creators. They watch the YouTubers that they love and think, I want to do that. Like my daughter really, really wants to be a YouTuber. And I, I keep asking her why, because you obviously you want to dig into the motivations. Is it because you want to be famous? Is it because you want to be rich? And you think that these YouTubers earn lots of money. But really, it's just, she feels like she has something she wants to say and she would like to express it and share it 
with other people because she wants to. And that's really sort of naive and honest and, and beautiful. What I like about this is that, you know, the way like when you read the blurb or the PR statements about metaverse experiences, you can almost write it blindly what they're going to say, all the buzzwords, all the crap that comes out because no one's really got anything other than, oh, it's immersive and it's an experience and it's an opportunity to get closer to the, I think it's bollocks. It's, it's always bollocks. Um, whereas uh, we're seeing the same language from Roblox in the blurb here, that it's going to be an immersive experience directly on Roblox. You get to experience our immersive platform. And then you get their mission statement, which is to connect a billion people with optimism and civility. Optimism and civility. I mean, it's just like, this is, this is clearly being hammered out in some boardroom somewhere with a bunch of very overpaid um, execs talking through the brand values of Roblox. What do we stand for? What are, what are we about? But to be honest, like, you probably do need that. And like, I, I can be, I, I can be critical of like over branding and over sculpting of brand messaging, but you know, this is, this is fine. Um, but what's really interesting here is that of all the, the platforms that could have hosted this kind of experience, Roblox is obviously the one where Firstly, they're in the best position to actually do a good job of it. Secondly, it is so specifically about them and about the experience of being with them that it's perfect. I mean, it couldn't be a better execution of a thing that allows you to get closer. And then on a practical basis, Roblox is a global game. There's people all over the world that might want to kind of join in and be part of it. And getting them to a open day or a center is just impractical. So being able to do this and offer an experience and and bring people and get them to watch videos of real people from a virtual world altogether. I mean, I don't know necessarily if it's something that I would particularly enjoy, but again, I'm not the target audience here. And so what I think is really good about this is it, it allows curious brands that want to move into this space, an opportunity to see like the very best of teams that really understand their platform, using it to the very best that they can. And I think that's really important because so much of, you know, what you rely on as a UGC platform is the skill of the people that build on it. But of course, if you're your own best customer, Fortnite is its own best customer for UFN, then you really get to showcase what the platform can really do well. And I think that's great. I think that's genuinely great. And I, I'm, I can sort of part my snark a little bit on this one because as much as the language t ticks me off, um, I think the actual execution is probably pretty good here. Mm. I, I think as well, like there is an opportunity here for, you know, probably for younger generation, but like, like you say, like your kids, like if they do play Roblox a lot and they are creative and they're, they're not just consuming, but they want to build stuff like, especially as this has just launched, it's probably a great place to go and go and actually speak to people at Roblox. And like, um, you know, if, if you are hungry, young, and you want to work in this space, then actually probably to begin with, there's not going to be loads of people pouring into this space so it's probably a good opportunity to, to go and get involved and meet people who you might not get the time with otherwise um or you know if you're older and want to work there as well same like sometimes there's an opportunity where you probably a cold email is is unlikely to that happen but you, you might be able to actually have some good conversations in this space so i think there is a bit of an opportunity here for sure have you i had a question for you. have you have you ever been in a zoom call where someone's mobbed in and they've started making fart noises and are just basically being obnoxious and, <laughs> and griefed you a lot. What, like they've got the link that's accidentally... They've got the link and they're in there and they're just causing trouble. I've seen trouble. videos of that. Yeah, it's happened, it's happened to me a few times. It's a pain in the butt. Like it, I saw, I think it was Nick A, who's one of the biggest Fortnite streamers, talking about how he was trying to basically put together a private stream and coordinate a bunch of people to tell a story. It's crazy stuff that he does. But he basically, he uses the emotes that are in there and the locations in Fortnite to kind of build these stories up. And he coordinates like a hundred different people in a private game. And he just gets all sorts of a-holes coming in and it's like really screwing it up. And like, they'll get like two minutes into the production. And then it's just like, hey, hey. and then he'll get shot. <laughs> it's just like, ah, dude, stop it. And there's no, there's no way to kick them out. So you're just stuck with it. I think Roblox has a bit, bit more of a, a tool set for, for kicking people out. But I was worried that there's, you're going to get some some uh, some bad apple going in there. And yeah, just making fun there noises. probably is like an opportunity to do something quite cool that isn't just really annoying. Like 
if you you know you hear about these stories of like oh somebody gets hired because they did something really creative like yes you probably could get a load of people together to i don't know what it is like a flash mobby type thing yes. and actually get the attention of everybody at roblox in one space like there's probably yeah, there's probably something interesting there roblox is evolving isn't it roblox is evolving and growing up like every really week it feels like yeah it's yeah. a growing up it's aging up and it's just doing stuff that works like that is that is the thing like all of these like promises of metaverse platforms that were gonna basically take on roblox you realize that actually what a massive job that is to go head to head with uh a beast like this um so another cool thing that roblox are doing this is around uh, the pga golf tour now forgive me my golf knowledge isn't great also kind of hilarious that we've talked about conferences and golf like this feels like a very aged up episode but <laughs> it's interesting so um yeah, this is cool. It's basically a virtual event that is tracking and responding to the real life sporting event. So this has begun already, but I think there's various uh, PGA Tour playoffs. So one happened uh, on Thursday last week, the St. Jude Championship um, in their quest for the 2023 FedEx Cup, as I understand it. So for the first time ever, I'm just going to read some of this. Uh, the PGA Tour is integrating live data into a virtual FedEx Cup playoff experience in real time as part of the PGA Tour scramble on Roblox. So as balls are in the air in Memphis, Tennessee, they'll also be in the air in the metaverse. So uh, this has already kicked off and a new hole debuts each time on the PGA Tour scramble each Monday in conjunction with the playoffs. And as uh, PGA Tour players play the hole in real life, <clears throat> excuse me, their shots will show up as golden balls on PGA Tour scramble in Roblox, giving users the ability to earn extra points for sinking the pros' shots. So you're kind of up against the real life pros but playing inside a virtual world, which I think is a really cool concept. Uh, users get 100 points when they sink their own official ball and 50 points for golden balls uh, as they advance up the leaderboard. And then there's all these kind of additional fun things like you can spend those points on wacky balls like the wrecking ball or the ice ball or have to avoid gophers and snakes and alligators. And you'll even earn a special hat uh, each time you complete a hole. But I just think this is a really cool concept. Like sport and the metaverse is obviously like a category that's going to uh, be really interesting. We've seen it kind of watching sports we saw the apple vision pro stuff where you can see all the stats kind of you know coming out in front of you is one thing this is quite a unique idea where it's kind of additive to the real event so obviously the best experience is going there in the physical world and actually watching the pga tour but most people can't do that so if you can kind of part watch it and also compete against the pros in the virtual world that's also really fun that adds something that people have never been able to do before kind of compete in some way as it's happening so i think this is very cool. I definitely would like to see more of this kind of thing. Yeah. <clears throat> I was trying to figure out what the average age of a Roblox user is. Um, I know that 40% are above 17. Yeah. Sorry, like, but yeah. Yeah, you're right. It, it, we kind of got to get past this idea that Roblox is just for kids and that it doesn't appeal to other people. 9 to 12 euros comprise 23% of Roblox's user base, which means the remaining 77% are not nine to 12 year olds and therefore i mean golf is golf is one of those games that you it used to be seriously uncool and i was i became aware of the fact that it was like it had become youthful and cool and funky about i don't know 15 years ago um because it is it's it's one of those weird sports that that, that like it's very accessible anyone can play it but it's also very elitist <laughs> it's like this weird weird combination of things but it does make for compelling sporting drama. It is watched by a lot of people around the world. And it's probably it's probably one of the sports that has the highest kind of equipment turnover, equipment buying uh, ratio of any sport, in fact, because you know people who play golf seem to believe that if they buy the best, newest driver, they'll be able to hit the ball further. And to a degree, they're actually right. So there's always this sort of turnover equipment. So it's very profitable. Uh, did you ever used to get like golf sale signs in your hometown do you remember that like there would be a yeah, guy yeah, with a neon yeah. board it was always a golf sale going on i don't understand <laughs> yeah, that. That, that it's so a very true, english yeah. thing but like for a period of time like there was just always a golf sale going on it's not something i've ever thought about but now you say it it's like yeah why were they golf why, every time why you went on the motorway golf or every sunday like, yeah you just walk into town like oh, do you know what? i really fancy a pair of golfing spikes and yeah. some plus fours i don't know why <laughs> it's just like I don't even really play messages it, everywhere oh right, we digress no, let's not talk about golf sales um why this is awesome Golf goes on for a really long time. That is a really, really strong net positive for this because I think one of the hardest things to do is coordinate people around the world for a specific point in time, like 
for a concert, for a live event. But if you have a, an event that goes on naturally for a very long period of time, anyway, even if it's for a day or a golf tournament, it's like four days, <clears throat> you have a much larger surface area to, you know, to get people and give them a chance to casually jump on and continue jumping on. I think that is genius. Uh, tracking the data from the real game, obviously genius. And golf itself is that statistical game where there's always an opportunity to to level up or you'll get ahead in real time. And that always feels like it's a very progressive thing and your, your um, successful failure is in your own hands. And I think that's, that's why this works so well. Um, I'm just trying to think what other kind of sporting events would lend themselves well to this. And I cannot... I cannot get away from cricket. Cricket feels like it was designed for something like this. Test matches have long been kind of considered dead and buried, but they, you know, they keep coming back. England has been playing this thing called basball, where they basically, they don't give a shit whether they win or lose. They just want to entertain people. And so they'll just go after the ball. They take the lessons from 2020 cricket, where it's literally just see ball, hit ball, smashing out the ground and apply it to test cricket. And it's made it really exciting. But of course, there's like basically... People in India love cricket and the rest of the world doesn't really care. Uh, but it is a compelling game. And so obviously cricket, tennis. Tennis goes on for two weeks. The Tour de France, again, three weeks. These sporting events that can be tracked in the metaverse and give casual participants who are really invested in the sport a chance to be part of it. I guess if you can, like for the Tour de France, if you could connect it up to Zwift or something like that and give people a chance to... Um, set times against Tour de France participants in real time because they have all this data on the bikes and stuff. That would be sick. Like cycling is another sport where middle-aged men overspend on equipment at, you know, chasing marginal gains that will give them at least a chance of of being half decent. It's an amazing sport cycling. It really is. Um, but I, I wonder if this lesson could be applied to things that are not sport. Something to think about. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot there, isn't there? It's... Um... Yeah, you can see how this will spiral, especially like you say, as they've got all the data from all these sporting events, like it seems to, to bring that into a playable environment for other people is a big kind of unlock of stuff, isn't it? And, yeah. and also like, I, I, I remember, I mean, the, weirdly, the PGA games throughout growing up were always, for some reason, they had amazing mechanics. Like I was never really into golf. I used to love playing Tiger Woods, whatever it was. Um on the PSP and stuff and like that. And that's been hooked away, hooked away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, even early, early Microsoft Golf simulators for anyone who remembers that, like uh, good times. Um, and also recently I've been playing a VR cricket game. Me and my brother got obsessed uh, with this VR cricket game because the mechanics are brilliant in VR, like really and we and it was proven because a uh, friend of my dad's came around who actually plays cricket, who for some reason couldn't play that day and coincidentally we were playing on vr and he's like oh i love go and he was really really good at it instantly when we were missing all the balls and everything because he played real life cricket so that's um, amazing because you, you would yeah. think that you would think the hand eye tracking would be a little bit off on on were you playing on quest playing on quest yeah and oh, i've got to try that <clears throat> yeah it's, it's really really good like obviously graphically it's not amazing but the mechanics are so fun and i was so it was so interesting to see that somebody who was good at cricket really was instantly loads better than us like just just knew where to look and how to do the shots and everything so i was like okay this is really cool even the esports olympics that we've talked about that like, got criticized a little bit because from the esports world they were using different events but like this whole idea of uh just getting sports out to new people and actually it made me want to play cricket and i genuinely reckon i'd be better at cricket from playing the vr stuff which is kind of nothing yeah like simulation yeah but have you ever this... actually played did you ever play cricket yeah, I'll tell you my cricket experience at school. I played one ball and I uh, had a box on and it still smacked me uh, in the nether regions and it sent me to the ground and I thought nothing is is worth this. I'm never playing this sport ever again. Um, and that is what happened. I didn't play it ever again until VR, which is a negative experience, but I was like, this is just not worth it for me. But I can understand and appreciate that it's a great sport. Yeah, I, I was a I was a fast bowler, opening bowler really? of, of our oh, school okay. team. Yeah, so I, I was nice. I was that guy. Uh, I was a wicketkeeper for my prep school team, but the satisfaction of bowling the first ball of the innings and seeing the stumps destroyed is quite hard to explain to people, but it's a thing. And getting the ball to swing, once you learn how to get the ball to, to move in the air and hoop around, it's really satisfying. It's so nerdy. And like you just spend a lot of the time just out in the outfield. So if you didn't have to do that, 
But the thing is, like being an opening bowler, I was terrible at batting. So I would I would come in at number eleven, and I'd stand there, and the guy would just like I mean I'd be shuffling around all over the place, no clue what I was doing. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a funnily compelling game if you're actually in it and playing. Um, but yeah, there's definitely there's definitely all this data around. Like you, you think about Hawkeye that tracks the ball tennis matches, all these kind of things. That data could be piped through to a game in real time. No problem at all. And you could get to a place where you could basically face the same ball that the players were, yeah, were facing, but nice, in a virtual environment. And you, you could, you could um, like, what's the word? You could uh, match play them. I mean, this is, this is nuts. And again, I keep coming back to that, um, that Disney portion of the the vision pro demo where they were showing all this sort of next level next gen sports engagement and stuff this is probably a latency problem is going to flag itself but it's pretty nuts oh did you see have you seen there's like serious rumors that apple's going to buy disney that apple really is going oh to days. buy disney that's wild that is wild right it's been sort of lingering around like a bad smell for some time, but the, there's there's serious rumors. Now, obviously, like you know, if you saw Microsoft trying to buy Blizzard Activision, there was serious roadblocks in the way of that. And um, this woman who's in charge of prosecuting these mergers and acquisitions, I forget her name, surname's Khan. She's been like all over these things, trying to stop big mergers and acquisitions going on. But like Apple and Disney. Apple and Disney, insane. And you yeah, think you think you mad. think everything that Disney owns, the entertainment behemoth that that creates, both the platform and the entertainment and the reach and the brands, Star Wars and Marvel, Lucas Arts. I mean, holy moly! Starting to see Apple play in the sports arena as well. Uh, yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Maybe, maybe that's yes. where things are heading. There's a lot yes. there. Yeah, there's loads loads of stuff. We'll, we'll move on. Briefly, my head is like management games. Like everybody wants to be, like if you're a football fan, like wants to have a go at managing England. Like imagine if you could sort of have the data and then use AI. And if you'd made this decision, maybe this was... Like, oh, it just gets really interesting, isn't it? Yes. Like, so that, 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 that reminds me, there's this terrible film, um, Gran Turismo, that's out at the moment. I, I, I suspect it's garbage, but um, it follows this guy, this kid, Jan Mardenborough, who mm. was a... He was a PlayStation... He used to play Gran Turismo on PlayStation. And he got a gig racing for i think nissan um which is kind of amazing i i actually worked for a company that was producing videos for that particular race series that he was in and so we would see this kid jan mardenborough who was just shredding winning races and like genuinely talented not like the top 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 tier but like a competitor and like he'd only trained on playstation mm. so I'm talking about is, like yeah. a cricketer that you know cricket sims and all those kind of things i i love all this stuff i love the the idea of challenging yourself to, to get really good at a sport but only virtually and see if it has any translation relatable um qualities at all in in the real world but obviously you have to really fully commit to that but like cycling is one that i definitely want to try out because i ran a marathon in the metaverse and it was i only ran inside on a treadmill and it was nuts but it really got mm. me fit it was great so yeah, anything anything crazy. like that that sort of disrupts the normal patterns of or the, the blockers to to doing things that otherwise would be really healthy for you i think it's a good thing yeah, the whole idea of gamifying like fitness as well is going to be a big trend. I think like you're starting to see the fit XR stuff on on Quest, and and it's just way more fun. We saw there was a video that went round uh, recently of people on the treadmills, but they were in a gym, but they were running around a track, and and their avatar was like the position they would be in the race. So all these people were, like in the gym, basically the racing against each other. Yeah, because that's basically that was the thing that was missing when I was training for the marathon. I I did a lot of training in Zwift, and it was great because you had you have this sense of going on a journey and you're traveling through all these different locations, but you're still on a treadmill and you can still look around and see what I wanted was like, I want to be in it. I want to be totally in it. Um, and the yeah. fact like just racing other people in the gym who you've never, you don't know, but you can just sort of join the race. Like exactly. As far as, like, that's hilarious. That would make me want to go way more. Yeah. Lots of, a lot there. Um, okay. Next story. then. this is an interesting one. It was an article from Wired and it's talking about the nuances between how humans learn and machine, how machines learn, and talking about how it's not all just down to data. So it's kind of making the point that if we want AI to be massively useful for humans, especially in like ever adapting situations, we need kind of a new approach. I think this is useful to understand if your business isn't built on a set of very repeatable kind of 
inputs. So I'll explain a bit more. But uh, basically, it says like human brains brain evolve to make predictions in unstable and ill-defined situations, often generating on the fly explanations and adapting to new information. Machine learning typically reasons through categorization and sort of struggles in unstable uh, conditions. So an example that they used uh, was the Google had this project that was trying to predict, predict flu trends and completely failed to predict the pandemic in 2009. And then the whole thing got shut down. Uh, uh, sorry, it started the, uh, it the swine flu pandemic in 2009. Um, and then they closed it down in, in 2015. So uh, they started using an approach that was to do with intelligent forgetting. So relying more on recent data. And if they had done that, they would have kind of halved the errors. So it's this idea that actually a machine is learning with all the data and it kind of values all that data equally. Whereas with humans, especially in uh, adapting situations, the ability to sort of forget or at least rearrange that data in terms of what's more important is actually uh, really interesting. So I'll link the article because it goes into quite a lot of depth, but they're now experimenting with kind of psychological AI trying to mimic it more on the human brain. And I've never thought about forgetting stuff as like a kind of advantage or maybe just kind of rearranging that data. So yeah, it's um goes a bit deeper than that. And maybe it's not all for right now, but I'll link the article, but it is, I thought it was a really interesting concept that, okay, yeah, machines just run all the information and keep all of it and sort of rank it sort of all the same. And that's actually not that useful in some practical applications. Kind of interesting. Yeah. And it also makes total sense, doesn't it? You keep adding files to your hard drive. Eventually it clogs up and the machine shuts down. It can't, it can't handle all of that. And it would be the same for AI. You, there's hierarchies of data. Some data is garbage and shouldn't be considered. And some data isn't. Memory in human brains is really, really interesting. And you think about, you know, prosecutions of criminal cases, how, you know, eyewitness testimony is, is so heavily relied on and it's completely unreliable. People's memories are just so good at recontextualizing and reimagining and rewiring what happened for comfort or for bias or all these different kinds of things. We're actually very, very, very good at deceiving ourselves and creating new versions of stories to help ourselves, you know, just manage life. And that's how it's always, it's like a self-defense mechanism. It's incredible. And, and if an AI doesn't have that self-defense mechanism, then basically what you're asking it to do is expose itself to everything with zero defenses and still thrive. And I guess you just, you reach a, a saturation point where you can't even do that anymore, but it should be obvious, right? <laughs> but you know, it, it's, it's working out what should be forgotten and how, and even if actually what should be kind of put in a, in a cupboard somewhere, is it left in its naked state or do you just create a, a reference file to, I don't know. I mean, I, this is, this is asking questions that my poor little brain is unable to answer. Obviously. Yeah. Same, but I'm not necessarily massively qualified other than, you know, knowing that clearly it's nuanced, like in certain control situations, like the, the way that AI learns and generates faces where in very basic form, as I understand it, it's like two computers, one who was trying to trick the other one. And eventually it's like gamified. Like if you were playing an expert tennis player, basically you'd get better and better and better until you were kind of as good as them. So it creates fake faces and the other one's trying to spot the errors and they go back and forth and back and forth until they can't spot any errors. And then you have like a perfect human face. That's GAN stuff that, um, yeah, that is mastered. So, it, so in certain situations, obviously the approach of lots of data is going to be great and it's going to be much better than us at lots of things. But in other situations, uh, and there's lots of conversation around bias of data, obviously, if there's bias at the beginning and it can't um, filter that out, then yeah, the results you're going to get will be, you know, that it will incorporate that bias. The kind of summary of it was that more computing power makes machines faster, but not smarter often. So we can get to a result really quickly and amazingly, but is it the right kind of result for... Yeah, and it, it does kind of shine a lot on the AGI question, doesn't it? Because if it, if an AGI is in a hyper-intelligent machine that can process all this information and exercise good judgment and common sense and everything else, you have to wonder if such a thing is even possible because you fundamentally you get to a point where you're like, you need specialized units that do a specialized thing and then you need management units that manage the specialized units. And then you need management units on top of those that have 
access to the parameters governing those units, but not the data that's involved in the decision making processes around that. I'm just making this stuff up, but it seems well, like it that's sounds, where we sounded really good. Yeah, I was nodding along with that. What you need, I guess, what you need is super intelligent AI to come through and go, no, 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 no. You guys are looking at it all wrong. Um, I think you should be looking at it like this. Obviously, he's going to be a very debonair English supervillain. Um, yeah, that's how it would speak. That's, that's how I imagine hyper-intelligent AI speaking. Yeah. If you are interested in this stuff, we've done a great episode with Edward Saatchi, who works for Fable Studio, who created the South Park simulation and are creating or trying to recreate sort of intelligent life with a bigger simulation, which is really interesting. He talked about multi-agent um, AI. So a bit like what you were saying, kind of AIs that that run and instruct other AIs of what to do and manage things. And that conversation is interesting. So if this is your world, that might be one to check out. It feels a bit like Agent Smith in The Matrix Reloaded, where it's like, me, me, yeah. me too. <laughs> yeah, like, hilarious like, how they're called agents in The Matrix. And it's it's all, like yeah, they it's, had read the same new. science fiction novels as everybody else. Yes, well, yeah. I know. True. All right, let's go on to the next story then, because this is... Uh, again, like we've had it on the show multiple times, but you have these moments where you're like, okay, this is all sort of a bit fun and games. And then you see a thing and you're like, oh shit, this is, this is not fun and games. Uh, hey, Jen is a real realistic avatar generator. So we've, you might've seen Synthesia, which is able to, you have a set of actors and you can kind of give it a script and they are, um, photo realistic. They look really good and they can create videos where their lips are in sync and they look pretty real, but there's, there's something you can spot there. Although, uh, I'm often people don't mind. There's a TikTok channel that really blew up where they just basically made videos with the avatar. Anyway, that was kind of, they were the pinnacle. They raised a lot of money actually as well. Uh, and suddenly this video dropped from this company, Hey Gen, which is just another level of realistic human avatar, like a video that you just can't tell really, unless you really inspect it or you have a very long sentence and then a K, maybe there's some weird sort of intonations, but that's all going to get cleaned out. Um, and it really went massively viral uh obviously for listening on the podcast um we'll show the video i'll link it below because it's something that you need to see it just is mind-blowing like it's we are there if not so close to being like every video you see you just will not be able to know whether it's real or not that happened which was crazy in itself um it was dropped by joshua chu who's the founder of hey gen then also at the same time there's uh, a separate company lipped up ai and a video went round of something they'd created where they are able to, again, complete, and this I think is kind of even more impressive, basically change lip syncing. So make anybody say anything in any language and the lip sync is perfect. So there's a video of some famous YouTubers just speaking languages which they can't speak in and the lips are perfect. And you can't tell, like, and yeah, it just is one of those things you watch and you go, okay, this is absolutely insane because this means so much amazing that you can now the the days of sort of awkward dubbing on films and tv are over i know for a fact that a lot of tv companies are suddenly like we need to get hold of this software immediately because it's massively obviously valuable and mr beast has proved it as well on youtube where he made a whole kind of spanish channel which does loads of views compared to his just uk english channel obviously there's far more people in the world that don't speak english that's the obvious use case but also you can make anyone say anything in any language is just absurd so uh yeah you watch this video and it, uh, it's hard to not be kind of flabbergasted, doesn't it? Well, it, it's been coming. I've, I looked at quite a lot of these video generation tools when the AI thing kind of blew up. <clears throat> they all look like snake oil. They all look like they're just kind of selling you a thing and like mouths move. And yeah, it, okay, fine. The thing that is difficult for me is that having grown up as a video producer, and seeing it as a skill, as a, a service you offer to people, you know, the high standard of things. And there's so many things that go into making a video and making it work. You're just kind of seeing this, this area of production just annihilated, like straight up. And there are a lot of production companies that just won't make it because of this. Um, if you are a, a business owner and you want to make a video and you can't, afford to hire a presenter you don't want to hire a presenter because let's be honest it's quite difficult to cast people and cast people who are right production days are annoying and if you have never done one before they can be a pain in the butt just to be able to drag and drop text into a an avatar and then it says stuff and is convincing 
I mean, hallelujah. That's you and your video marketing done. Obviously, you know, what this means is there'll be more and more video content that is credible, if not particularly inspiring, <clears throat> but maybe that's all you need. You know, you just target the right people with, in the right way with the right message. But you're right. It is, it is alarming how utterly credible it is. Now, there are limitations, of course. You have a person standing there. They might move their arms a little bit and you see their face move. But the fact is you can just type whatever you want it to say. It will say it. And it doesn't sound that bad. The sound quality is not crispy. It's a little crunchy. It's not crispy, but uh, it, it won't be long before AI can clean that up as well. Um, so genuinely ast astonishing. But like seeing Emma Chamberlain speaking Italian was fantastic because Emma Chamberlain has this vibe about her. She's, she's stylish. I would love to see her speak French, but she's sitting at a, at a, at a, you know, at a cafe just jabbering away in Italian. It's perfect. It's perfect. You're like, and and the other one's Casey Neistat speaking Hindi. Mm. <laughs> it's yeah, just it's, amazing. It's just to witness, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. So you're actually right to flag Mr. Beast here because he, he's obviously a man who is hell bent on taking over the known universe. And so what he understood was that, as you quite rightly said, there's X amount of people who speak English who would appreciate English content in the world. So he gets his videos dubbed like professionally dubbed by the famous actors in the country of his choice and the the actually you mentioned spanish the, his biggest market is actually portuguese in brazil believe it or not is it? Oh, um, interesting. but he built an entire company that translates the text of his videos and then redubs them <clears throat> and now youtube allows you to do um mixed audio channels as well i think or at least it's it's coming anyway so one video can serve many 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 different um, audiences. Obviously, there's a cost to all of that. And I'm actually looking at HeyGen now just to see what it costs to to use it. And it's 24 bucks a month. <clears throat> oh, you get 15 credits. So yeah, all of these things like AI is not free. Video generation is not free. Um, but obviously, if it's a marketing cost and you can build it into your budget, you'll save an absolute fortune on physical production. And to be honest with you, if that's, if that's an industry that is being disrupted, then I'm okay with it. It needs to be disrupted. The thing that you're kind of moving all the way up, looking at the writer's strike, the actor's strike, where does that, where does that fit into all of this? Because, you know, <clears throat> the actors are, are, they're right to be scared. They are right to yeah. be scared. Yeah. That is sort of the crux of it, isn't it? It's like, I do think we're crossing over to, to this chasm, not to a fear monger, but like, even my friends who aren't really into the space at all are like beginning to get scared a bit. And it's like, yeah, okay. Like there's obviously loads of good stuff and, and we've talked about good things as well. And we're going to talk about a good one in a second, but yeah, it is when you see it like that, it's uh, it's pretty, it's pretty weird. It's definitely worth a watch. So I like, will link it. There for is sure. There is a kind of brutal Darwinism about all of this though, <clears throat> because it is survival of the fittest and those who can will adapt and those who can't, will be shepherded off to a place where they they're no longer useful uh, i see a lot of posts from ai influencers or people who are kind of deep in you know this ai space shitting me this idea it's like there's never been a better time to build a one-man business you can crush it as a one-man business right now in the exciting world of ai i can show you how to get 15 leads today to crush it as a one-man business You're like all right all right but what kind of business? I mean, I, I drive an enormous amount of satisfaction out of the work that I do. I enjoy it. But I know for a lot of people that it isn't necessarily about that. It's about earning money. But yeah, there's, there's, there's people who are taking advantage of this right now and using AI to, to power these, these extraordinary businesses. It's just one man. I, yeah. Well, yeah. The other thing is that like, I mean, we, we saw Synthesia, the company before HeyGen, who were like doing this thing, who raised a lot of money six months ago and like, yeah, like sometimes I think about, oh, is, is there an interesting AI business here? It's like, yeah, probably, but probably in six months, like someone else is going to come along and use AI to over. There's this mad like battlefield, isn't there? If if you go after one thing that's like clearly can be improved and doesn't really have loads of nuance in it, like I mean, these videos are probably basically corporate training videos. It's obviously going to get better, but at the minute, that's the thing. Well, that just gets decimated um yeah it's, it's interesting if there's not more to it if there's nothing human there or, or no nuance or no creativity or something i don't know i don't, I don't know it's big questions, yeah it's but... it's the 
it's the templatization of everything taken to the absolute extreme. There's literally just drag and drop, get it made, done. And like I'm in a mocap suit right now. This, these are my mocap gloves. Everything that we are doing at the moment is the exact opposite of that. It is so bitchingly hard trying to do what we're doing it because there is no template. There is no blueprint for any of this stuff. We have to make every single thing up ourselves. And you know what? I love it. Mm. For example, this is this is the camera that we use. Ah, yes. It's a, a Ronin S. If you're listening to this, this won't mean anything to you. But this thing is this thing is nuts. It has a front facing and rear facing monitor. And this is how we shoot in the metaverse. This is a metaverse camera. And as you can see, there's no lens. There's just this plate with tracking markers on it. But that allows us to get a steady shot in the metaverse and, uh, and do what we want. But, that, that, but, that, but this is full custom. Mm. Full custom. There's no, there's, there's no easy way to do this. Um, and like I said, I, 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 the more we get into this world of templates and just simple drag and drop, and it's just easy, 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 or no code world building, or like AI can just build you stuff. Like I'm just running in the opposite direction. Yeah. Yes, I want to use all this stuff. But at the same time, I just want to, I want to make something that's actually genuinely meaningful and unique and i had to sweat over because sometimes it easy is well doesn't teach the you example of that is like how crazy is it that not long ago we saw you know mid-journey pump out uh you know amazing realistic or interesting images whatever which is definitely amazing no one's arguing that but like i and i'm sure other people are, are kind of like not impressed by that anymore like it's too easy to do so it's kind of i'm like i've seen it before and you have this ridiculous sort of um limited time of being impressed by stuff especially if everybody can do it it's like well then i don't really care anymore like um and all the content that we talked about before gets reduced down like i'm getting sick of the short form attention grabbing videos there's still a lot of way to go there because uh, not everyone's kind of on it yet but it's like that attention span getting crunched and just everything sort of looking kind of the same and blah 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 it's like i do i do think what the opportunity will be and what humans will do is go the other way and i think that's part of the the virtual world sort of plan and where content's going to head is that actually you want to get away from like somebody in your face all the time you want to go and explore an environment with friends and just hang out with probably just them and not like loads of strangers trying to promote you stuff like half a lot of twitter like all those threads you mentioned are written by ai now like because it's optimized for blah 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 blah. and and i'm beginning to just skip yeah. them even if they promise the biggest thing like because you just know it's like you know what it's going to be and it's like ai is crazy this week you won't believe what happens and, and then it's the other one is the other the other phrase is now anyone can dot 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 now anyone can dot 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 do this and like every time i see like now you can produce hollywood videos yourself it's like what the fuck are you talking about what are you talking about what is a hollywood film what is a hollywood define a hollywood film like what is it and how is it that someone with runway ml is going to be able to produce a hollywood film do you mean you can create a, a, a moving image that looks kind of cinematic yeah okay but that's not hollywood that's not cinema <laughs> fuck off honestly that's um maybe i'm just an old man crying into his soup but at the same time i actually i like to ensure that we're talking about the thing that we're actually talking about because particularly when it comes to like making movies or photography these kind of things there's more to it than just the simple tool of being able to point click make something happen there is there's there's, there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on as well that if you assume isn't there then you're looking at the problem the wrong way anyway yeah final thought on that i think as well as like people get obsessed with the reach and how many people see stuff but not really like how much it converts or whether there's any long-term um kind of value there like tiktok is an amazing example of like getting your reach and your brand out there for a fleeting second right you can get a million views and that is cool and that is valuable and especially if you can repeat it like that's the challenge is, is if you can like build something that people come back to but like in one instance like everybody can kind of get a load of views once but it's just so fleeting that like you just skip it doesn't really mean anything anymore so it's like i think people are obsessed with getting the views but it actually how valuable is that yeah you're not wrong i i've had i've had to do a lot of soul searching around the content that we made because when i was at the defiant we we were putting out seven videos a week and then we're doing live streams and everything else we, we were cranking content and like the, the thing about crypto is it's this kind of soap opera that's always ongoing there's always a story there's always something new to talk about and people check in daily to see what they've missed so you could give that to them and you could make it interesting but man like i just got to a point where i, I couldn't do it anymore i just it just crushed me because you become a machine you become this 
this number chasing automaton and it's not fun and it wears you down after a while so so um, I, <laughs> I've been trying to think about like what is what is it that we actually want to do, and it it's fewer, bigger swings and stuff that scares us, but that we can point out and go, you know what, we really went out and did something cool here, and it's terrifying because you sit there and you watch people who are cranking out content and you see the number of views they're getting, and you're like, why aren't we doing this? And then you take a step back and go, because if we were doing that, then it would be a straight shot down to depression and game over. We kind of have to stick to our guns here. And the other point is, there's sort of two ways to approach this thing. You can either be the one talking. So you can be the conversation starter, the gateway for people to understand things. And I've done that. I have been that person. I know how to do it. I don't like it. I like. I don't like it for two different reasons. One is you, you live or die by the quality of your research. And at a certain point, you get saturated in it and you want to do other things. Secondly, people start to put way too much stock in your opinion. And that really gets you into trouble after a while. So there's another way to play this, which is don't be the one talking, be the one being talked about. Now, in order to do that, you have to do some pretty interesting and innovative things. But I honestly think that's in the face of so much content being created by AI. As you rightly said, all those threads, you know, that people are putting out, they're all AI written. It's garbage. It's just meaningless. And like anybody can disrupt that. You got to, you know, you got to do custom. You have got to build things that other people cannot simply come along and replicate. Because only then can you actually have the peace of mind to know that twelve months from now you're going to be okay because you build something that is difficult to disrupt. You have a moat, but those moats are fewer and fewer and fewer and far between now. Uh, so yeah, really, really interesting times. Just one last note: there's, there's this uh, gamer called Quebble Cop. It's based in Amsterdam. Mm, he's he's just, been on the show. Yeah. He's um he's just released an AI toolkit to basically produce work as himself to a very, very high high standard. And I think his rationale for doing it was that just to pretend protect his own sanity to be able to deliver content at the speed and scale that he needed to. Um he decided to turn himself into an AI agent, which I thought was really interesting. We'd we definitely want to kind of go and meet those guys and see what they're cooking up down there. Um Really interesting. Interesting thoughts, for sure. All right, we're going to finish on just a happy story. That is, uh, I think this is quite nice. Um, Starbucks have launched an AR-type experience, which lets customers explore notes of kindness with the new AR experience. So pretty simple, but I like this. You can basically uh, scan a QR code and then leave like a sticky note um, inside a store, um, which says something nice. So then if you have the app, you can go and, you know, move your phone around and view all the nice things that people have left. Obviously, you'd never know it in the physical world. Um, but I thought that was a nice, just uh, happy thought of a fun way of using the technology um, and a way of kind of, you know, using a physical space, just scaling it up into a virtual world and doing something cool with it. So uh, I don't know how they stop people leaving not nice messages, but uh it's an it's a nice thought i thought that was a nice thing to to end on they're also in partnership with headspace the kind of meditation app that focuses on kindness um and if you're part of their reward thing you get like a two-month free membership so i was like okay that's yeah that's quite fun quite a nice way to to use ar and uh hopefully we'll see some more of that stuff that will give us less doom about the future and, and more humans being nice well, how's that gonna look you're gonna be walking into starbucks like this <laughs> yeah you're gonna people are gonna look at you strange because they're gonna think you're filming them but uh and you'll be like no it's i'm reading nice notes my girlfriend left me a note of <laughs> kindness on the wall in the starbucks oh how romantic <laughs> i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go i'm just gonna head down to starbucks see if anyone's left me a message of kindness <laughs> yeah. uh yeah <laughs> dude come on come on you're gonna pull it down you're gonna really it. really it's nice <laughs> what like how is it how is it a bad thing i'll tell you what's nice a handwritten note put through someone's letterbox. That's nice. Nah. Definitely. Ha- no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. This is garbage. I mean, I, I, I applaud them for the the attempt and trying to create a, a positive spin around a more hum- humane uh, technology. Well, I think what I've learned about myself recently is that I'm a sucker for marketing. I'm like, this is a really nice thing. You are thing such a sucker for Starbucks, marketing. Starbucks, a massive conglomerate, uh, have done. And they've done it out of the goodness of, the, of their heart not to incentivize people to come into Starbucks and spend money on their products. They, they actually, they're just nice people. They're just, uh, which, 
yeah, I give, I give it what, you, what have you been smoking? Any brand managers out there looking looking for what it looks like when the <laughs> yeah, gullibility yeah, yeah. slider is pushed all the way up to 100? Here yeah. it is, right yeah. now. They aren't my true thoughts. But... I'm pretty optimistic and naive <laughs> myself, but I am, I am not you. Wow, you are, you are a special <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah. They're not my genuine thoughts, but I do get I do get hooked in quite easily. But yeah. They're your sponsored thoughts. Who's sponsoring you? Are you getting sponsored <laughs> yeah. by Starbucks? It's not a sponsor. <laughs> it's done. Uh, good. Well, on that note, I think that's probably the pod. That is the pod. Turn the slider back <laughs> down, man. Come on. Peace. <laughs>